federal judge today blasted Donald Trump's former national security advisor and accused him of selling out his country. The judge's rebuke was accompanied by a stern warning that Flynn could face jail time for his crime, which the judge described as a very serious offense that disgusted him. The judge, Emmett Sullivan, providing the latest dramatic and unexpected twist in the curious case of Mike Flynn, a three-star general turned cooperating witness in the Mueller probe after pleading guilty to lying to the FBI. The judge clearly piqued by Flynn's lawyers who had taken the position in their sentencing memo last week that Flynn had been tricked into lying to the FBI. The judge forcing Flynn to respond to pointed questions about whether he'd lied to the FBI and whether he'd known at the time that it was wrong to do so. Flynn's lawyer's introduction of what amounted to a conspiracy theory backfired spectacularly, but it likely cheered the president who tweeted this this morning, quote, good luck today in court to General Michael Flynn. Will be interesting to see what he has to say. Despite tremendous pressure being put on him about Russian collusion in our great and obviously highly successful political campaign, there was no collusion. We're awaiting a presidential response to today's fireworks and Flynn's refusal to go along with the Janine Pirro approved conspiracy theory about the FBI. But for now, now, Flynn will continue to cooperate with all ongoing federal investigations while he awaits sentencing in 90 days. Here to take us through yet another dramatic and wild day of developments in the Mueller investigation, some of our favorite reporters and friends, former FBI Assistant Director for Counterintelligence Frank Figluzzi, former U.S. Attorney Joyce Vance, with us at the table Robert Costa, Washington Post national political reporter and moderator of Washington Week, Karine Jean-Pierre, senior advisor to MoveOn.org, Donnie Deutsch is in the house, and Jonathan Lemire, Associated Press White House reporter. Let me start with you, Frank Figluzzi. What did you make of this judge having none of the Flynn conspiracy theories, and really making abundantly clear that lying to the FBI is something that someone with Flynn's background should certainly have known better than to do. So this is more about what we don't know, Nicole, than what we do know. And by that, I mean there's, there's information under that redacted FBI FD-302 that we've all tried to read that the judge is privy to that we're not. And my instinct is telling me that the judge is thinking <clears throat> there's more room for cooperation here. And when he combines that with the attitude he saw in Flynn's last minute filing late night, he's thinking there's more to this and he wants to send a message here and preserve additional cooperation. And he, what he's done here is he's, he's really created a bad day for Flynn, but it's not the greatest day either for Bob Mueller. They thought they had this arranged, and now there's a twist. So we need to say, see how this plays out. We need to also think about people that coming down the road, like Jerome Corsi, Roger Stone. How are they perceiving today's proceedings? Does this mean they better cooperate fully and totally, or does it mean it's not worth cooperating? That remains to be seen. Let me press you a little bit on, on why, I think you may have just explained it, why a bad day for Mueller. Is it because their requests aren't the word of God? There's still a judge that's going to take their recommendations but make his own decision? Or, or is there something else uh, that in your mind represents a setback for Mueller? Now, that's, that's precisely what I'm talking about. If you're sitting across the table from a potential cooperator, you want them to understand that cooperation is absolutely in their best interest. You never make guarantees, ever. That's drilled into you as an agent, as a prosecutor, but you do want to lay out the likely scenarios that you're going to recommend to the judge. And, and let's, let's be, be clear here. There was substantial cooperation by Flynn. And he was at the lowest end of the sentencing recommendations. So his cooperation clearly helped him. But this is a wrench in, this, in the mix. And this doesn't help Mueller when he sits across the table from a future cooperator, except to say, look, Cohen didn't totally, excuse me, Flynn did not totally, totally cooperate. And the judge still was upset. 
you need now to totally cooperate. Frank, so many convicted felons, it's hard to keep track of all of them. Joyce Vance, let me come to you and let me read you a little bit more of, of what happened in court today because it was dramatic. And, and I, I'm really intrigued by what Frank's saying because it suggests that, that Mueller, again, is sort of blowing up the idea that there's any witch hunt. He's suggesting he was more, um, uh, I guess, generous to Michael Cohen in his sentencing uh, procedures than the Southern District of New York. He asked for less than what the judge threatened today, the judge threatening jail time for lying to the FBI. But, but I want to read you some more of this judge. This judge has become a fascinating new figure in this drama. Uh, judge Sullivan, uh, Mr. Flynn's briefing concerned the court because it raised issues that could affect or call into question his guilty plea. I cannot recall any incident in which the court accepted a guilty plea in which he was not guilty and I don't intend to start today. I will inform you of any false answers. We'll get you in more trouble. Do you understand? Flynn says, yes, Your Honor. Sullivan says, do you wish to challenge the circumstances under which you were interviewed by the FBI? No, Your Honor. Joyce, the significance of that. Explain to us. So I'm going to be a nerdy lawyer for a minute Please. and talk about sentencing and what lawyers do at sentencing. It was clear to everyone walking in, although the judge was smart to, to put Flynn under oath and, and get him to say it under oath, that Flynn was not claiming that the FBI had entrapped him. If that had been the case, Flynn would have never <laughs> pled guilty, his lawyers would not have permitted him to plead guilty, and the judge wouldn't have accepted the plea. Instead, the lawyers tried a sentencing strategy, and it misfired really badly. But what they wanted to do was capitalize on federal rules of sentencing which require judges to consider a series of articulated factors in the law. And one of those is to sentence similarly situated defendants similarly to compare this defendant to others in the case. Two other defendants who've been convicted of the same conduct lying to the FBI have received short prison terms. So Flynn's lawyers wanted to make sure he didn't go to prison. They tried a strategy to differentiate him from Vanderswan and Papadopoulos and it backfired, as we saw today in court. But this was lawyering, I think, as opposed to conspiracy posturing, which so many people have read into this. Doris, let's, let's keep me in law school. I've got one more for you. Um, so the judge also said, I have to caution you that the sentence imposed today may not be the same sentence you would get after cooperation ends. The court likes to be in a position to say there's nothing else this defendant can do to help the United States of America. Do you agree with Frank's assessment that that redacted document suggests that there's more Flynn can do to help Team America for which he serves? Absolutely. It must be that that's the redacted portion, ongoing investigation, which Flynn could cooperate in. And it's unusual here, Nicole. Typically, prosecutors don't ask that defendants be sentenced until their cooperation is complete because you want to have a little bit of a hammer over them if they take the witness stand at a trial. You want to ensure that they continue to cooperate. So along the way, it's been confusing to me why Mueller wanted Flynn to proceed to sentencing before everything was over. Apparently, the judge didn't like it much either. Frank Fugluzzi, let me just let me just bring the Flynn story um, into focus for a minute because this week the DOJ indicted two of Flynn's uh, business associates. Uh, Natasha Bertrand has also reported that FARA violations, basically doing the work of a foreign government without properly disclosing it and registering and, and, and paying all the appropriate fees, is something that Mueller is aggressively pursuing and prosecuting. Could, can you just sort of put the Flynn story? in its appropriate place at this moment. So what, what we're seeing here is, Nicole, is what we've seen with other associates that Trump surrounds himself with, which is this self-interest, this profit-driving, motivating factor. It's They're in it for money, in it for themselves. Where Flynn has went south in his career, what happened, why the bitterness, why the turn against national interest, that'll be studied for a long time. But now these two associates, and, and are involved in doing similar activities, selling out for other countries' interests, doing far more than lobbying work, by the way, actually talking and discussing the possibility of, of having DOJ change a position in order to get a Turkish cleric back out of the United States, almost in the form of some kind of rendition mm -hmm. or, or movement to a third party country. Lots of investigative journalists working on what is going on here with with this potential move and, and, and work with Turkey. But, but 
this is beyond Russia. Let's pe let's have everyone understand this. Everyone's focused on well, Flynn was talking to Ambassador Kislyak. No, Flynn Flynn was open for business. His associates were open for business, and and we don't know where multiple compromises might have entered this picture. We don't know how much Trump knew about this and whether those countries they're involved with match Trump match, match countries that Trump is involved with and that cash flow and why Flynn um, had to lie to FBI agents. This is a bad group of people that don't have our nation's interests at heart. And this is someone that Donald Trump thought more of than he did Michael Cohen, somehow seeing in his mind a distinction between Michael Cohen, who he called a rat, and Mike Flynn, even though he, I think, he pleaded guilty Thanksgiving a, a year ago. He's been cooperating with Robert Mueller longer than anyone. But Donald Trump constantly singling out Mike Flynn for praise. Let's watch. Did you direct Mike Flynn to discuss sanctions with the Russian ambassador no, prior to your no, inauguration? No, I didn't. And would Mike, you have fired him if the information me. hadn't leaked out? No, I fired him because of what he said to Mike Pence. Very simple. He was calling countries and his counterparts. So it certainly would have been okay with me if he did it. I would have directed him to do it if I thought he wasn't doing it. Hillary Clinton lied many times to the FBI. Nothing happened to her. Flynn lied and they destroyed his life. I feel badly for General Flynn. He lost his house. He's lost his life. And some people say he lied and some people say he didn't lie. I mean, really, it turned out maybe he didn't lie. <laughs> it's like the Khashoggi defense over here. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. He lied. He stood up in court today and said he lied. But you have covered the Trump-Flynn relationship since the beginning, since Mike Flynn was on the short list for VP. I remember him uh, being on the set, uh, the Morning Joe set, and, 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 and Mika interviewing him um, about some of his positions because he suddenly emerged as so close to Donald Trump that he was on that very short list to be vice president. Who is Mike Flynn to Donald Trump? Well, if you watch those clips, you see the deeply personal way President Trump speaks about General Flynn, and it's reflective of where this White House is right now. Talking to people close to the president, they say he and Rudy Giuliani, the lead lawyer, continue to think about General Flynn in these personal terms, rather than thinking about a legal strategy, how highly unusual it is for a president to weigh in with good luck wishes on the day of a legal event like this. And they think this is siege warfare run by Jay Sekulow and Rudy Giuliani and President Trump. There's not a big law firm attached. Republicans on Capitol Hill feel isolated. They don't, don't want to get involved at all. Mm -hmm. Yet the president is sitting there in the Oval Office, we're told, just talking about Flynn and how he feels like Flynn's being betrayed by the Justice Department, how Robert Mueller's being unfair. And that's not a legal strategy, which worries many people in the president's party. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.